Ellis had to go to the hospital the other day. When she entered, she immediately felt something off about the place. Walking along the hall, she spotted three doctors. There was something completely wrong about one of them. Which doctor is crazy? The one on the left, he's got wolf eyes and teeth, and there's no badge on his uniform. Stay away from him, Ellis. All right, Ellis didn't listen to our piece of advice and went straight to Dr. Wolf's room. He says he needs to apply some new protective cream on her. But in fact, he just wants to test it. After covering Ellis with this magic lotion, she shouldn't have trusted him. He makes Ellis choose one of three containers to jump into. Wow, this is a weird hospital. One of them is filled with toxic waste. In the second container, there's acid that can eat through metal. The third one is filled with lava from a volcano that almost ruined a whole town a year ago. What container should Ellis choose? At least this time, Ellis made the right choice. She picked the container with lava. The volcano erupted a year ago, so the lava is already completely solid and cool. Okay, she nailed the first experiment, and Dr. Wolf gives Ellis a choice of three pills. He says the red one can help see the past, the blue one can help see the future, and the yellow one can help read other people's minds. Which one should Ellis choose? Ellis was smart enough this time. She randomly picked the yellow one, but she suspected it was another experiment. She gulped the water but never swallowed the pillow and still has it in her cheek. In fact, all three of them were poisoned. When the wolf went outside for a second, Ellis spat out the pill and ran away. Hey, try the urgent care clinic, Ellis. No wolf's there. Ginny was cooking dinner for her friends. When everyone was at the table, she suddenly realized there was something wrong with one of her friends. Which friend didn't like the meal? It's Mike. He secretly shared it with Jenny's dog. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have a name Mary? She was once young and beautiful too, but then that darn spell happened. One town had a weird law that said all the men had to be cleanly shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. The only person who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old hairdresser. But who shaved the hairdresser? Yeah, there was no need. The hairdresser was a woman. Allison met a stranger yesterday, and she immediately knew who he was. She hadn't seen this person before, and no one had ever described him to her. He wasn't a celebrity, and he wasn't doing anything unusual. So how come she knew who he was? The man was the twin brother of one of Allison's friends. Bill is a shoe shiner. He offers his services to passers-by for free. Still, people who accept it end up paying him of their own will. How so? Bill shines only one shoe for free. People don't want to look bizarre with just one clean shoe and have to pay for the shining of the other one. The king told his three daughters to place three identical kettles with the same amount of water on the fire. The king promised that the husband of the daughter, whose kettle would boil first, would become his heir. His youngest daughter's kettle boiled first. How come? While the other daughters kept lifting their kettle's lids to check if the water was already boiling, The youngest one kept it closed. Up for some math? Nah, just kidding. You'll only need your logic. Find a way to get 200 out of 188 by just using one line.
use the line to cut 188 horizontally. This way, you'll get two 100s. One person was 25 years old in 2000 and 20 years old in 2005. How is this possible? This person lived before Common Era. One man went to his friend's party and told his wife he'd be back before sunrise. He shaved and left home. He returned as promised before sunrise, but he was sporting a long, thick beard. How come? The man and his wife lived in a place with polar nights that can last for several months. A man was driving his car all the way from New York to Boston. Only at the end of the trip did he discover that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he managed to reach his destination successfully, and his journey wasn't affected by this problem at all. How is it possible? The punctured tire was the spare one. The financial director of a big company finally persuaded new partners to sign a super important agreement. He then put this document into a folder and left it on the table in his office. When he arrived at work the next morning, the folder was gone. John gathered all the employees who were in the office at the time and questioned them. The cleaning lady said that she had been busy washing the floor and hadn't paid attention to anything around. The designer explained that he hadn't left his working place even once. What's more, being an artist, he didn't have any interest in agreement documents. The accountant admitted that he had entered John's office to have some documents signed. But once he noticed there was no one inside, he immediately left. Who took the folder with the agreement? It was the designer. John never mentioned which folder was gone. How would he know that the missing folder had an agreement inside? Eric wears either only black or only white socks. One morning, he was in a hurry, getting ready for an important meeting with new partners. Suddenly, the power goes out. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in his drawer, but all of them are mixed. He doesn't want to look silly at work wearing different socks. If it's completely dark in the room and Eric can't see anything, how many socks should he pull out of the drawer to get himself two matching ones? Three socks are more than enough. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two of the same color. A hungry vampire is following you in a lonely street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door wide open and decide to hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter since you lock the door in the nick of time, but it's waiting for you outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three doors leading out of the house. When you open the first door, there's molten lava. No thanks. The second door leads to the room with tarantulas as large as your head. Yikes! As for the third door, you can definitely hear a huge dog barking inside that room, and you're kind of afraid of it. What should you do? Ah, just wait till morning. Vampires can't stand daylight, and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet on the wall. There are no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. Jane told her boss someone had taken the document she prepared for the meeting. She added that she had noticed someone come in wearing a smart suit, gloves, and a black mask. Safety first. This person also had three rings on their fingers. The boss didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves. Then how did she see three rings on their fingers? Jane must have simply forgotten to print those documents out. 
a hotel owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. He wanted to start welcoming the guests as soon as possible and had big plans. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. Some worker grabbed it and ran away. The hotel owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone, trying to get electricity for the site as there was not. The designer told the police he had been trying to find the best paint for the walls. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a burst light bulb. The detectives figure out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. How could he fix the burst light bulb if there was no electricity at the construction site at all? Ah, liar, liar, pants on fire. So Mia wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing. But her father didn't let her. Mia thought for a while and remembered her grandparents had just moved to their new one-story country house. She asked her dad if she could visit them at the weekend, and the man agreed. But Mia went to the party instead. When she got back home after the weekend, her father asked her if she had had a good time. Mia replied she helped in the garden a little and spent the rest of the day upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. How? Mia said she'd been upstairs, but her grandparents' house is a one-story cottage. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 11 plus 3 equals 2. 10 plus 5 equals 3. Now how is that possible? It makes sense when we talk about time. 11 o'clock plus 3 hours is 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock plus 5 hours is 3 o'clock. One king wants to find out which of his three sons is the smartest. He takes three chests and puts his crown in one of them. On each chest, there's a statement, but only one of these statements is true. The crown is in this chest. The crown isn't in this chest. The crown isn't in chest number one. Each person can only open one chest. The son who figures out where the crown is will be the next king. But can you solve this riddle? If the first statement is true, the other two must be false. It's not so because the second statement turns out to be correct. Uh So this assumption's wrong. If the second statement is true, the crown isn't in the first chest. It's not in the second chest either. Then it must be in the third one. But this makes the third statement correct, Uh although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, the first one's wrong and there's no crown in the first chest. The second statement's also wrong. Now, there are no contradictions. The crown's in the second chest. Here's a sequence of letters. Which letter should you add? The missing letter is F. If you put it at the end, you'll get E. James and Taylor were best friends in elementary school. Unfortunately, when the children were 10, James and his parents moved to another state. The friends lost contact. 15 years later, James and Taylor accidentally bumped into each other in a cafe. It was their first meeting since school. They recognized each other and started talking. It turned out Taylor was already married and had daughter. Wow, said James, does she look like her dad? Oh no, Taylor said, the girl's a mini version of her mother. Ah, so she must be a blonde with blue eyes. This time, James was right. How did he understand that? Taylor's a girl. She's the mother. And James only needed to describe her. You're outside a room with three switches in the off position. Your task is to find out which one turns on the light in the room. You can flip as many switches as you want, but you can walk into the room and check if the light's on only once. 
How can you understand which switch controls the light bulb? Turn on two random switches and wait for a couple of minutes. Then, turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light's on, the switch connected to the bulb is the one you left in the on position. If the room's dark, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, the correct switch is the only one you haven't touched. Esme got lost in the forest. She was wandering around for the whole day. Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house. A witch lived there. The girl had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house and asked for help. The witch said if Esme solved her riddle, she'd be free to leave in the morning. Here's how the riddle went. 17J, 70M, 96A, 162J, 256S, 354, hmm, what's the missing letter? The 17th day of the year is in January. The 70th day of the year is in March. The 96th is in April. The 162nd in June. And the day 256 is in September. Day 354 is in December. The missing letter is D. A young girl got her first job as a maid in a rich lady's house. Once, when she was tidying up, she noticed a very expensive collection of books. She made a break to look through one of them and then returned it to the shelf. The girl kept working until the very evening. No one else was at home. After finishing her work, the maid returned to the shelf and discovered that the sixth book was missing. But she clearly remembered that the book had been there before. It was the one she had been looking through. When the lady returned, the girl confessed she lost the book. But the woman only laughed and said everything was fine. Nothing was missing. How come? The collection had eight books. The ninth book was actually the sixth one. The girl accidentally put it upside down. Right before Christmas, the police got information that a famous thief named Alfonso had left Chile. He boarded the plane to Los Angeles. The only thing the detectives knew about the man was that he had a beard. At the airport, the police officers met a group of people. They had just arrived from different countries. The detectives noticed four men with beards and interrogated them. The first one said he'd come from London. The second told the police he arrived from Chile, but his name was Cristiano. The third man answered he'd come from Sweden. And the fourth one was also from London. The police didn't even need to check their plane tickets to spot the criminal. How did they know? It's Christmas time, but the man who supposedly came from Sweden is dressed too lightly for that climate. He must have arrived from Chile, where it's summer. A road accident happened on a foggy day. Two drivers were taken to a hospital. Each of them had a concussion. Interestingly, their cars didn't even have a scratch. What happened? The drivers were going in opposite directions. It was foggy, so they stuck their heads out of the window. They didn't notice each other and hit their heads. Ow! Samantha was born on January 27th. For the first 20 years of her life, she celebrated her birthday in the winter. But starting with her 21st birthday, she began celebrating it in the summer. Why? She moved to the Southern Hemisphere, where it's summer in January. Two sisters, Ava and Nicole, are very honest girls. They always tell the truth, except for one day a year. On their birthdays, they always lie. Today is September 17th, and you ask them when their birthdays are. 
Ava says hers was yesterday, and Nicole says her birthday is tomorrow. The next day, you ask them again, and they say the exact same thing. Can you guess when their birthdays are? They can't have two birthdays. It means that one day, one of them lied, and the next day, it was the other's turn. Since Ava mentioned yesterday, her birthday must come first. So Ava's birthday is on September 17th, and Nicole's on September 18th. Bethany, Tommy, Eliza, and James spent the whole day at home alone. Their mother didn't let them enter her room. When she came back in the evening, she wanted to eat her chocolate bar. But it was gone. She went downstairs and asked the kids who had eaten her treat. Bethany said she'd been doing her algebra homework the whole day and hadn't eaten anything at all. Tommy replied he'd been playing football outside. Eliza said she didn't even know where their mom kept chocolate. And James simply claimed it hadn't been him. Their mom knew immediately who had taken her chocolate. How did she figure it out? It was Eliza. The mother never mentioned what kind of treat was missing, but Eliza somehow knew it was chocolate. The father of identical quadruplets, Aurora, Belle, Chloe, and Dana, called the teacher and asked her to let Dana leave earlier. She had a doctor's appointment. The teacher couldn't tell the girls apart. To have some fun, the quadruplets refused to confess who was who, but gave their teacher a hint. Chloe is somewhere in the middle. Dana is to the left of Belle and to the right of Aurora. Aurora is right next to Dana. How can the teacher identify the girls? Chloe is somewhere in the middle. And since Dana has someone on both sides of her, she must be in the middle too. If Chloe was the second, Dana would be the third. Then Dana would be to the left of Belle, and Belle would be the fourth. Then Aurora must be the first. Uh But it doesn't work, because Aurora and Dana have to be next to each other. If we switch Chloe and Dana, Dana will be right next to Aurora, but still to Uh the left of Belle. So the right order is Aurora, Dana, Chloe, and Belle. Dana's the second girl. A wealthy man, Mr. Johnson, had a precious vase Uh that he valued more than all other belongings. One day, the vase disappeared. The man was miserable. An hour after he discovered it was missing, he got a message. If you don't come here in 10 minutes with $100,000, your vase will be broken. There was a photo attached to the message. Mr. Johnson realized it was some hotel. In that area, there were three of them. The Hero of California, Hummingbird, and Youth Hostel. Where should the man go? Mr. Johnson should hurry to Hummingbird. It's the only hotel that has the seventh floor. Amanda was in the middle of a burning room. The only window was small and too high for the woman to reach. There was also nothing to climb or stand on. There was no rope, neither was there a door. And still, in a matter of seconds, Amanda was outside. How is it possible? There was no door in the room. The woman just ran out through the doorway. A woman is sitting in her cabin in Ohio, but four hours later, she gets out of her cabin in Arizona. How did she do it? The woman is a pilot, and the cabin is actually the cockpit of the plane she flies. One night, Kevin broke into a rich house. He knew its owner had just bought a unique diamond. The thief managed to get through one of the trickiest security systems he'd ever seen. And here it was, the diamond. After grabbing the gem, Kevin got out of the house. But when he was already outside the gate, two security guards caught him. The guy tried to persuade the men he was only a passerby, but they didn't believe him. They searched Kevin, but found nothing. The guards were puzzled and decided the thief had swallowed the diamond. 
but X-Ray also didn't show anything strange. The security guards had to let Kevin go. The guy got home, and in a few minutes, he had the diamond in his hands. How did he smuggle it? When Kevin broke into the house, he wasn't alone. His parrot was with him. After getting the precious stone, the guy attached it to the parrot's foot, and the bird brought the diamond back home. Paul was a young but very talented chemist. He was going to attend a very important conference where he had to present his latest work. But right before the event, Paul's envious colleague locked the guy in his lab. There was no way he could get out of there on his own. In the middle of the room, there was a test tube with some bright purple liquid inside. There was also a note. This mixture will blow up in one minute. You've got only one chance to neutralize it with one of these ingredients. If you add the correct one, the reaction will stop. Here's the clue you'll need to figure out the needed ingredient. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And don't hope your chemical knowledge will help here. Luckily, Paul was very smart and managed to find the right ingredient before the time ran out. Which one was it? It's a row of letters from H to O. It means the needed ingredient is H2O, which is water. Two identical vans were crossing the bridge when it collapsed. The car fell into the water and started to sink. Luckily, the drivers were unharmed. But they had to find the way to the surface really fast because the vans started to fill with water. One of the men began to push the driver's door and the other was trying to open the side door. Who has the higher chances of survival? The first driver won't be able to open the door because of the water pressure. But the side door in the second car is a sliding one. With some effort, the second driver will be able to open it and escape. One person can dig a hole within one day. Then how long will it take two people to dig half a hole? There's no such thing as half a hole. Look at these pictures and try to figure out which mirror is magical. It's the one on the right. It shows the man wearing a mustache, but in real life, his face is clean shaven. Betty was having lunch in her favorite cafe when several police officers came in. They were looking for a criminal who had escaped from the police station the day before. Betty started to look around, examining the visitors. She spotted the criminal even faster than the officers did. Who was it? Look at the barman. He's wearing handcuffs. Daniel wanted to go to the seaside with his friends in the summer, but his father reminded the guy he'd promised to help in his parents' store. When the man saw how upset his son was, he offered him a deal. Daniel had to solve several riddles and then he'd be free to go and have fun with his friends. So, our customers often ask us to sell them something that's full of holes but can still hold water. What should we offer them? After a while, Daniel found the right answer. What's this mysterious thing? It's a sponge. Daniel's father continued, I'm thinking of introducing a new method of pricing the things we sell. Socks will cost $20. A tie will be $12. You'll have to pay $28 for a sweater. And a coat will cost $16. Based on this pricing method, how much will be a t-shirt? Do you know the answer? Daniel was confused at first, but then he realized the correct answer was $24. His father was going to charge $4 for each letter needed to spell the item of clothing. You're doing really well, Daniel's father told the guy. That's why I'll give you just one more riddle. If you crack it, you can have some rest in the summer. 81 times 9 equals 801. 
This equation isn't correct. What can you do to make it true? This riddle took Daniel quite a while. And how fast can you solve it? All Daniel had to do was turn the equation upside down. Luckily, the guy managed to figure it out. He got 108 equals 6 times 18. Jason was a courier who regularly delivered food and other stuff to Mrs. Brown. The elderly lady really liked him a lot. She trusted him enough to let the guy use her spare key. The lady kept it under her doormat. When Mrs. Brown was away, Jason would take this key and leave everything he brought inside. One day, the guy came to the woman's house and found out the key wasn't in its usual place. He rang the bell, and a man he'd never seen before opened the door. I'm an electrician, he said. I was fixing some lighting problems in the living room, and the elderly lady is resting now. Jason immediately called the police. Why? The criminal entered the house with the help of the spare key. Paul came back from his lunch break and saw that someone had spilled coffee all over his documents. He cried out, and this attracted his boss's attention. The man decided to figure out who had spoiled Paul's work. He asked his subordinates what they had been doing during their lunch break. Nancy and Liza said they had been together. They went to a cafe to get some coffee. Brian explained that he'd felt unwell. That's why he decided to take a walk in the park. And Sandra said that she'd been talking to her boyfriend on the phone. The boss immediately realized who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Sandra. There's a sign on the wall that prohibits the employees to use their phones in the office. It means the girl couldn't be speaking with her boyfriend. A wealthy businessman disappeared right from his home one afternoon. His wife called the police. The detective arrived and questioned everyone who was in the house at that time. The cook said that she'd been preparing dinner and hadn't left the kitchen. The maid claimed she had been cleaning the dining room after the businessman and his wife had had lunch. And the wife said that after lunch, she'd been sunbathing and swimming in the pool. The detective immediately realized who was behind the man's disappearance. Do you know the answer? It was the wife. Look outside. It's late fall and there's no water in the swimming pool. Jeffrey was on a plane, ready to have his first parachute jump, when he started to panic. Without putting on his parachute, the guy jumped out of the plane. And still, he remained absolutely unharmed. How is it possible? The plane was still on the ground. There's a large apple tree growing on a cliff. If a powerful wind is blowing towards the land, where will the apples fall? In any case, they will fall down. Okay, get ready. Today I'll show you different riddles, and you'll have to decide which girl is behaving least wisely, which is a nicer way of saying she's a dunderhead. You'll have 7 seconds to decide. The riddles may award 1 point, 2 points, or 3 points. So grab a piece of paper and give yourself the points each time you get it right. We'll start with the easiest questions that earn 1 point each. Autumn and Hope are going for a walk with their friends. It's 60 degrees outside. Who is dressed in the worst way? Hope. Autumn can take some of her clothes off, but Hope doesn't have anything to wear in case she feels cold. Ava and Olivia are camping in a forest. Suddenly, they encounter a bear on their trail. Ava stands still, and Olivia starts to run away. Who is in danger? Olivia! The bear might see her as prey and follow, and he's definitely faster. So it's better to keep your cool and slowly move backwards, keeping the eye contact. Haley and Savannah are making sandwiches for lunch. 
Who did something terribly wrong? Haley. She put rat poison in the sandwich instead of jelly. Delaney is on the road trip and stopped to make a couple of pictures. Lenore is riding a bike to a nearby city. Who isn't being smart? Delaney. She parked her car right under the sign that says parking isn't allowed. Jane and Charlotte are learning how to swim. Jane went to the lake with her little siblings, and Charlotte went to the ocean with her friends. They both jumped in the water alone. Who is in greater danger? Jane. In case she struggles, her little siblings won't be able to pull her out. McKenna and Desiree are late for school, so they're taking a shortcut. McKenna takes the way through the woods, and Desiree decides to go across a frozen lake. Who's in danger? Desiree. There are cracks on the lake's surface. Ruby and Mary were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Ruby hid in her car in the open space, and Mary kept swimming in the ocean. Who is not safe? Mary should get out immediately. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. It's okay to hide in a hardtop vehicle as Ruby did. Okay, easy questions are over. Next questions will give you two points each. Paige and Riley are going on a date, but they tell their parents they're practicing instead. Paige plays tennis, and Riley plays soccer. Who's the worst conspirator? Riley. She's dressed inappropriately for a soccer game. Unlike Paige, she doesn't have any change of clothes or equipment with her. Quinn and Sandra are working in a garden. Quinn was told to water the flowers, and Sandra should mow the lawn. Who's doing something wrong? Quinn. She was told to water the flowers, but she's watering the trees. Everly and Jasmine drove to a mall. Everly left her belongings in the car, and Jasmine locked her dog there while she's shopping. Who's being more stupid? Jasmine. You shouldn't leave animals or people in a closed car, especially in the hot sun. It's the wrong way to get a hot dog. Mia and Stella wanted to get a tattoo and skip their classes to get home right after school. When they get home, they immediately run into their parents. Who's going to get in trouble? Stella. Her tattoo is right on her wrist, and there's no way her parents won't notice it immediately. Hannah's best friend is teaching her ice skating, and Lily is learning to ride a bike with her older brother. After several minutes, they feel like they've got it and ride away from their supervisors very fast. Who's least careful? Lily. Hannah has the railing by her side that she can grab in case she falls. Lily will crash to the ground. Kylie and Abby are bloggers getting ready for a party. Who is missing something? Kylie. She's charging her cell phone, but the cord is unplugged. Melanie and Delilah are walking home from work late in the night. Which of the two isn't being careful? Melanie. Although she's walking in a less creepy place, there are no people around. If something happens, no one will be around to help her. 
Sophia and Brooke went camping in the forest. Suddenly, they notice a moose moving towards them. Who is in greater danger? Sophia, who is wearing heels and will run slower. Brooke can drop her huge backpack and use it as an obstacle. Kira and Ava want to go to a party, but their parents banned them from leaving the house. Kira decided to sneak out using the attic window, while Ava used the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Ava. Kira is quite risky, but Ava's dad is reading a newspaper in the backyard. Maya and Chloe went for a walk. Maya went to a forest and stopped to take selfies with a friendly squirrel she met. Chloe went hiking and decided to take a selfie on the cliff. Who is in danger? Maya. The branch above her is about to fall. Maeve and Sarah are cheating on their math test. Who is more likely to be caught? Sarah. Although she's sitting in the back, the teacher's looking right at her. Bella and Ashley came home from a party, which they told their parents would be a study date. Who's going to be grounded till the end of the month? Bella. She'll have a hard time coming up with a logical explanation for the confetti in her hair. Elizabeth and Kate are late for work, so they're driving above the speed limit. Which of them is in greater danger? Kate. She has many objects lying scattered in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. Ariana and Serena have to do their house chores before they'll be allowed to go to the birthday party. Who is going to be late? Ariana. The iron isn't plugged in. Since she's distracted with the TV, it might take her a while to notice. And finally, here are the hardest questions that award 3 points each. Jessica and Margo are jaywalking. Jessica is listening to music, and Margo is texting her friend. Who is in greater danger? Jessica. Although they're both behaving poorly, Margo is on a straight road where she can be noticed. Jessica is jaywalking before the road takes a turn. Someone might not have enough time to react and stop. Julia and Nea are taking a vacation to the jungles. Julia got tangled up in lianas. And Nea got stuck in quicksand. Who's in danger? Juliet. She can't get out, and there's a jaguar approaching her. Nea is relatively fine, because it's actually difficult to sink in quicksand. Leah and her friend Caleb went camping. Caleb was bitten by a snake, and Leah is sucking the venom out of his leg. Amelia is on the trip as well, and there's a black widow on her neck. Who is in danger? Leah. It's dangerous to suck out the venom. As for Amelia, black widows rarely bite, and the bites are rarely fatal. Becky and Allison are both in a bathtub doing their morning routine. Becky is using the hairdryer. Allison is charging her phone while scrolling through the internet. Who is less clever? Allison. It's dangerous enough to have a socket close to the water, but Allison is charging her phone. Becky is sitting in the empty bathtub. She might be a little weird, but at least she's safe. Evelyn and Grace are on vacation. Evelyn is spending it in a desert, and Grace is in the wilderness. 
By the end of the day, they get tired and decide to spend the night where they are. Who's making a huge mistake? Evelyn. Night temperature in the desert can fall to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and she'll be freezing. Grace's fire will scare away wild animals. Emma and Avery are planning to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who's not going to make it to the movies? Avery. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. In the evening, she'll get food poisoning. Scarlett and Emily are sitting on a beach in a city center. Scarlett is applying makeup, and Emily is texting her friends. Who is more likely to be robbed? Emily. Although they're both distracted, at least Scarlett has a mirror in her hands and can see if someone is approaching her. Ella and Madison are driving to their friend's birthday party. Ella is chatting on the phone with her boyfriend, while Madison is applying lipstick. Who is in greater danger? Madison. Although they both shouldn't be distracted while driving, Madison isn't wearing a seatbelt. Now, sum up your points. If you got less than 25 points, you scored below average. Uh, but don't be sad. Check out some of our other riddles to train. If you've got between 26 and 40 points, you have an average score and you're on the right track. If you scored between 41 and 55, you're above average. And if you scored 56 or more, you must be a second Einstein. Uh, relatively speaking.